You're listening to Win the Day with James Whitaker. What we do in life echoes in eternity. Broadcasting from Los Angeles, California, here's your host, James Whitaker. Let's go! Welcome back to Win the Day, and this is the final episode of 2021. Whether it's been a fun year or a tough year for you, remember that the best way to enter the new year is with an idea of what you want to achieve and a bulletproof plan to implement it. And that's what we're going to give you in this episode, 11 things to think about so you can win the day every day. For those who have registered for the day one mastermind, we have some very exciting things in store for you. These are things that I've never done before that is designed to give you even bigger results faster. There's only two spots left for the mastermind. So if you're a business owner and want my help to take your income, influence and impact to the next level in 2022, click the link in the show notes. Last chance, this will be full very soon. The quote for this episode is one that I put up at every speech that I do. Each day, if you do not make the decision to win, you have automatically made the decision to lose. I'm so passionate about that quote and how that dictates your daily routine. And our episode today is going to include some of the most powerful moments from the Win The Day show this year. These are the things that have stood out for me and I know will be enormously beneficial for you too. But as we go through our 11 lessons, I want you to think about what you're going to do to put them into action, because that's the most important thing. What are you going to do to put these things that we go through today into action in your own life immediately? Before we begin, remember that the right bit of inspiration can completely change the trajectory of someone's life. So if there's a friend or loved one out there who needs to hear this episode or could use some help to win the day, share it with them right now. All right, let's go through the best moments of the year and give you 11 steps to win the day every day. Number one, understand the science of purpose. Goal setting is such an important component of success, yet most people have absolutely no idea how to properly set goals. In episode 61, elite performance psychologist, Dr. Michael Gervais mentioned the science of purpose and its relationship to goal setting. Let me, let, me, let me explain that thing about goals is that um, I'm much more interested in purpose. It's a higher order principle. And so when purpose is really crisp and clear, goals just become markers on the path. But purpose is something, if you follow the science of purpose, it's not necessarily attainable. It is the groove of which you move through life with because it's, it's what matters most to you. And so like if it just needs to be huge and big. And uh, let me just be more clear. The science of purpose has three arms to it. One, nobody can give you purpose. It has to matter to you. It has to have personal meaning. The second is that it needs to be bigger than you. So it's not something that you can accomplish on your own. And then the third is that it's down the road. It's in the future. It's like it's out there. And so those are the mechanisms of purpose. And when you get your purpose right, it is far more powerful than goals. That's our first tip, understand the science of purpose and recognize its connection to goal achievement. Number two, be an original voice rather than annoying echo. One downside of all the content in the world is that it's easy for people to duplicate what has been done rather than provide any original insights. And if you're serious about being recognized as an authority in your industry, you need to become a thought leader rather than a thought follower. There's a very big difference. You need to become a thought leader rather than a thought follower. In episode 52, we had personal development icon Simon T. Bailey on the show, and he shared the biggest turning point in his life. One day I woke up and I decided to be myself. I realized that I had listened to Zig and Jim Rohn and Mark Victor Hansen and Les Brown and all of the greats. And there was a piece of them in me, but you never got to me. So one day I had the epiphany and I said, you know what? I'm just going to be me. I'm going to be my authentic self and I'm going to show up and tell my story and, and, and be in that moment. And that's when everything totally shifted. Uh, When I realized uh, John Mason, who wrote the book, An Enemy Called Average, says most people are born originals, but they die copies. And I was tired of being a copy. Or as I said at the National Speakers Association uh, almost 15 years ago when I was blessed with the opportunity to be the open keynote speaker, I said, there comes a time when you no longer want to be an annoying echo, but you want to be an original voice. And and that was my wake-up call to really begin to understand how to be my authentic self. 
So if you're ready to be a success, be an original voice and watch how the demand for your expertise increases. Number three, see the full journey before you take the first step. Two avenues have taught me more about life than anything else. First was making the decision to start my own business and second was becoming a parent. And as an aside, we've actually got a baby boy joining us any moment now. The official due date is the 5th of January, so our life is about to get a little more chaotic. With parenting, I had spent a lot of time around my nephews and nieces, so I had a pretty good idea of what to expect on that journey. But when it came to starting my own business, it was really a trial by fire, and I wish I'd been able to see the full journey before I made that first step. Now, that wouldn't have stopped me from making that step, but it would have helped me prepare and put the right boundaries in place so the business could thrive and I could thrive at the same time. Unfortunately, I didn't have those things in place when I began that entrepreneurial journey and it deeply affected my mental health at multiple times. And I think it's really important for me to share that with you because you learn from some of the guests who come on the show, starting your own business can give you a form of trauma that is similar to what is seen in people who have PTSD. And a good way to alleviate that is to understand the real journey of what it's going to take. Not to get the cheat sheet on how to be a success, but to explore all of the elements. Things like the sacrifices you'll need to make, the plan to protect your mental health, and how these things will change who you are. In episode 59, my good friend and podcasting legend, Ronsley Vaz, who's overcome some huge entrepreneurial struggles, as you would have seen if you've checked out that episode, came on the show and spoke about that in the context of people who want to monetize their passion. Someone starting for the first time to monetize, I want to say that it is possible like you can monetize is the first thing the second thing is you might have an illusion of how that journey is going to go and it's not necessarily about bringing you down to earth or any of that stuff it's about actually looking at what the real journey looks like looking at that journey in the face and going yes i want to do this not I want the easy route. Show me the 10 steps to become an entrepreneur. (laughs) (laughs) When you understand the journey and what's required and you say yes to it rather than blindly going in, you'll have much more success in your business and you'll have much more balance and happiness in your personal life too. So that's number three. Number four, appreciate the gift of beginner's mind. A lot of people never make the leap to doing something they want to do because of two reasons. First, they feel like they don't have the expertise or the authority to do it. And second, they're worried about what other people are going to say. But when they concede to those feelings, they're forgetting a core tenet of success, that the most important opinion is how you feel about yourself. And a consistent theme on the Win The Day podcast is that beginner's mind leads to creative thinking. So you can create a product or service that's far more valuable than what others are doing because you haven't been corrupted by the industry standard of doing the same thing over and over again. In episode 63, Collie Power founder Gail Becker came on the show and shared her mindset prior to starting her very first business. For me, it would have been really easy for someone to talk me out of it, for someone to say, are you nuts? You, you're entering the most competitive part of the grocery store in the most competitive door of the freezer room? And if they had, to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't have done it. I guess it's a long way of saying for me, and again, everybody has to do it their way. But for me, I didn't tell anyone what I was doing. I just did it. I didn't tell my friends. There were maybe five people in my life, my close family, maybe one friend who knew. And the reason I didn't do that is because I didn't want people to tell me that I couldn't do it. I didn't want people to say how crazy it is. And I love how you articulated it because it really was crazy. Like now people say, oh my gosh, that was so smart. It was probably the stupidest thing I could have ever done. (laughs) Um, And thank God I did. I think in some respects, a little bit of ignorance and a little bit of shelter from all the naysayers in the world, it's not such a bad thing. You can hear in Gail's voice how important that self-belief and that beginner's mind has been in her journey to creating what is now a $100 million business. 
Now, of course, it's extremely important to do your due diligence in anything you want to pursue, but if you have a strong belief in the solution you want to create and your ability to deliver that solution, you simply need to focus on action. Prove through your actions how badly you want it and use the doubts and criticisms from others as fuel to achieve all that you want. Number five, only help people who are committed to change. If you're interested in making the world a better place, and let's face it, if you're listening to the Win the Day podcast, you probably are, there's a good chance you've been excited at the prospect of helping someone who has been struggling. But a big lesson for me over the last 10 years is that sometimes when you try to pull people up, they can end up pulling you down. In episode 51, top business coach Yuri L. Kame shared what had been a big light bulb moment for him. That was one of my biggest crises as a health expert was I wanted to help everyone. And I, it took me a long time to swallow the pill of the people who need it the most very often want it the least. And I was like, that sucks. Um, and it's the reality. Despite the best of intentions, you need to make sure that when you're interested in helping others, you allocate that time exclusively to those who want to change and are committed to the journey. Otherwise, you'll end up frustrated and on the brink of burnout, and they'll never appreciate the effort that you've made. So that's number five, only help people who are committed to change. Number six, build a subscription model for your business. From a business perspective, one of the best conversations I've ever had was in episode 58 with Greg Connolly, the founder of Trifecta Nutrition. Within six years, Greg and his sister Elizabeth had turned Trifecta into the largest organic meal delivery service in the United States, with more than $100 million in annual recurring revenue. Not bad for a business six years out of the gate. The foundation to their success was building a scalable business model that brought in consistent revenue for the business, while at the same time helping their audience get the best result, the best transformation. This is how Greg explains it. Both my sister and I came from the software as a service industry, so we knew the subscription model is what mm -hmm. investors liked. We knew the subscription model is how you build a scalable business. Because uh, if you don't have a subscription model, you're starting every month from scratch, mm -hmm. which sucks. We start every month with knowing that we've got, you know, more than $10 million worth of revenue uh, coming into the business. So that puts us in a, a position of stability that allows us to hire a huge number of employees, put money into facilities, uh, systems, data, uh, you know, all of the different areas that we invest as a business. And of course, you know, improving the quality of the food, the packaging, uh, all of that type of stuff. So we knew right out of the gates, it had to be a subscriber model. Uh, and, you know, candidly, that's what's more effective for people as well. They don't want to have to worry about reordering food every week. Mm -hmm. They just want the box to keep showing up so they can stay consistent on their diet long term. So if you're serious about long term business success, make sure a significant portion of your business revenue comes from subscriptions. Number seven, be a leader before you get the title. The world has become a little entitled these days. That's no secret. And people who adopt that entitlement mindset complain about why they haven't been given a leadership position, yet they haven't demonstrated through their actions that they would excel in a leadership position. One of the big things I work on with clients is helping redirect the energy that we use to complain about our circumstances and instead focus on what we can do to create the circumstances we want. It's a simple mindset shift. It's the exact same amount of energy, but it's an enormous difference in the result. In episode 53, confidence coach Netta Lena shared a ton of incredible stuff with us about confidence, leadership, and personal growth. Here is one of my favorite parts of that conversation. You don't need a title to be a leader. Mm. Every leadership title I've ever gotten was because I was a leader before I got the title. You know, when I became an executive, I wasn't, I didn't start as an executive. Mm. I walked into that corporation and I was just a normal team member but I led like, a, I thought like a leader, you know, I walk into meetings and raise my hand and say, have we ever thought about this? What about this strategy? Two months later, I was promoted to an executive, mm -hmm. two months, you know? And so it's not about the title. It's just about you making an impact and how can you make an impact? Every single person can make that impact even when they're in a big company. You just have to start by raising your hand and also by understanding your values. Values are really, really, one of my values has always been just to contribute and add value. So even if, I've, if I was a new team member, that was my value. So in a meeting, if I wanted to say something, I would raise my hand and say, 
can I ask you a question? Can we talk about this? And that initially, it makes you a leader. It's all about the mindset. So if you want to climb up the ladder quickly in your career, consistently do more than what you paid for. Be a leader before you get the title. That's number seven. Number eight, develop as much resilience as you can. Now, if you've been listening to the show for a while, you'll recall how I talk about two specific attributes for long-term success, resourcefulness and resilience. Resourcefulness allows you to get everything you need, while resilience keeps you moving forward when you take hit after hit in pursuit of your bigger goal, as we all do. In episode 57, Byron Dempsey mentioned that the biggest thing young people lack, in his experience, is resilience. The standards for living we enjoy today make it so easy for people to get whatever they want almost instantly. Things like food, uh, communication, entertainment, packages in the mail, even access to money. But all of those things comes with a cost to our mental health and our future happiness. To be very clear here, how you respond to adversity when it inevitably strikes is one of the most important things we need to remember. How you respond to adversity when it inevitably strikes. And the best way to respond appropriately is to build resilience. So how do we build resilience? Great question. Well, we make a habit of getting out of our comfort zone. You've got to put yourself in tough situations and figure out, figure the way out. I think we have way too many exits as young people, which then crushes our resourcefulness and resilience because we can just exit. Uh, it's the whole going back to the comfort zones, right? Um, we say when your comfort zone, when you step out of your comfort zone, you've got two choices. You can either push through it or you can step back into it. And most people in life step back into it. When you get out of your comfort zone regularly and you've adopted a growth mindset, which means you see the benefit in everything that happens to you, you will have developed resilience. And that enables you to first, stay in the game, and second, modify your approach based on what you've learned so you can be even more effective in your career and your relationships. So that's number eight, develop as much resilience as you can. Number nine, fill your mind with positive, practical, and powerful content. You're listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube, so that is a great start. Now, one of the most important things you can do if you're serious about your future is develop the habit of reading. There isn't a single problem you could be faced with that hasn't been faced by someone else in the history of humanity, and it is a near certainty that the solution you're after is readily available for you in a book that you can access right now. You have everything you need to be as successful as you want to be. But the question I want you to ask yourself is, am I really tapping into all the resources at my disposal? Literally every single book I've read has changed my life, if not through the content, then through the ideas that are spawned from the content. So make sure you're reading books or listening to audiobooks on a consistent basis. There is no excuse to avoid that. In episode 54, Jeff Brown shared this. And so when these books were presented to me, uh, you know, as you said before, when the student is ready, the master will, will come. And it was just all the stars and planets aligned. And I was like, gosh, this stuff has been out there all this time. And I've not been taking advantage of this. And as I began diving into these books and you know, choosing books based on where I was in my career versus where I wanted to be, skills I wanted to cultivate that I knew would help me in my career. And then eventually my business, like public speaking and that sort of thing. I began devouring books like that. And as I did, I realized, James, that just by nature of doing those things, I, were, I was doing something, practicing something consistently that most of my colleagues did not. And just by that habit alone, reading on a regular basis separated me from most of my, my peers and got me noticed. And the things that I began to implement and try in my job, the things that didn't work, that failed, nobody remembered. Nobody thought much about, but the things that did take, that did, that did work, people noticed. And that presented to me new opportunities, new experiences, chances to do things other people weren't getting the chance uh, to do. And I attribute that sort of upward trajectory in the last seven or eight years I was with that company um, and then on into today um, as, as uh, all to reading, all to the, the consistent and intentional reading I do is, is singularly responsible for a large part of, of, of my success. So if you're serious about getting to the next level in your life, in your business, and in your relationships, you need to fill your mind with positive, practical, and powerful content by reading books for at least 20 minutes every day and listening to podcasts like this one. That's number nine. Number 10, be yourself every day. We need to be less focused on what we see on social media, which is simply someone else's perfect snapshot from an imperfect day, and more focused on who we are and how we show up each day. 
In episode 56, a good mate of mine, Sebastian Terry, shared his incredible journey from tragedy to meaning. And the philosophy that he created has helped people all over the world and given Seb a platform to speak with individuals, associations, and companies about the importance of being your authentic self every day. And I dare say the secret to actual happiness is just finding out who you are and being that every single day, no matter what the situation, if you're by yourself, if you're with your partner, a loved one, friends, social, whatever you, if you're on a stage, if you're just yourself, that's happiness. Not whether you've jumped out of a plane naked or climbed Everest or, you know, done any number of other things, which are all great and needed for the process, but that's not it. That's not it. Yeah. Who cares if I've done a hundred things? Like I, I think about this sounds weird, but I think about this. So I'm on stages, right? Speaking on, uh, and I always think, I you know I look out at the crowd and they, they you know they they pay you money to speak about a list of things. If an if an alien came down from wherever he is and he stands at the back of the room or floats uh, and he says to the person next to him, "What's he talking about? Why are all these people listening to him?" And the person goes, "Oh, he's uh he's doing the things that he wants." The alien would go. What, are you not? Is not everyone doing that? It's ridiculous. So we should all just be doing the things because ultimately it brings us slightly closer to, to who we are. I love that and Seb is spot on. So make sure you're being authentic in your attitude and your actions every single day. Number 11, last and certainly not least, recognize the potential in yourself and others. This one's for the parents out there. One of the most popular episodes on the Win The Day podcast was episode 55 with Dr. Nicole Birkins. As the world's leading holistic child psychologist, Nicole has a research-based approach to getting the most out of your children's development, and it's directly applicable to our own lives too. Rather than condemn someone based on what we believe is a big weakness for them or immediately mask it with things like prescribed drugs, let's dig deeper and uncover what's really going on. But really our goal should be understanding the unique strengths and challenges of each child and helping to put together a plan that's going to improve their quality of life, support the family and move them towards their best potential. To me, that should be the goal for kids and adults in the realm of what we do in mental health. Not, you know, well, get on a list, wait and have some testing and evaluation done, then get your diagnosis, then wade through, you know, a whole list of things that you could go and try to do. No, we should be getting to know who is this kid really? What is this kid really about? And as much a focus on their strengths and the goodness that they bring to the table as we focus on the challenges and the symptoms they're exhibiting and helping parents and kids to really understand that. And I always say to parents, when I, when I do give a label or a diagnosis, before I even do that, I say, it's really important that you know that regardless of what I'm about to tell you and the label and the diagnosis we're going to talk about, your child is still the same amazing, wonderful, beautiful, talented human being they were when you walked into my office today. Giving you a label or a diagnosis doesn't change any of that. And I really try to frame that in a way that is empowering and uses the label more as just some knowledge and maybe an anchor for getting services and support and doesn't send the child and the parent into a realm of defining who this kid is and what their potential and their future is going to be based on that. If you're a parent and you haven't listened to episode 55 yet, do it right now. It's an absolute game changer. That's all for this episode. Leave a comment on the YouTube version of this episode with your favorite takeaway so I know what resonated with you the most. And if you wanna check out the full episodes from the clips we've shared today, you'll find them all linked in the show notes. That brings us to the end, our final episode of the show for 2021. As we finish, I just wanna say a big thank you to you for your ongoing support throughout the year. I mean, it means the world to me that you're here. I take the gift of your attention very, very seriously, and I hope you've gotten a ton of value out of the podcast. I know it's been another wild year, but despite all the craziness, it's important to stay focused on what you can control so you can keep moving forward. And I hope that the Win The Day podcast has helped you do that throughout the year. And it certainly will in 2022 because we've got some very big episodes lined up for you. 
If you're enjoying the show, hit the follow button so you can get access to episodes like this one as soon as they are released. And if there's a friend or loved one out there who could benefit from this episode or could use some help to win the day, share it with them right now. Have an amazing Christmas and happy holidays to you and your loved ones. For those who are doing the day one mastermind, keep an eye on your inbox and your actual mailbox. We've got some very exciting things for you very soon. And everyone else, I'll see you in a few weeks. Until then, onwards and upwards, always. Always.